Along the banks of Caney Creek sits Pippa Passes, Kentucky, home of Alice Lloyd College, a four-year institution with a strongly recognized commitment to the teaching of values and self-reliance. From a tiny shack, Alice Lloyd and co-founder June Buchanan created a college which is a testimony to their strength and determination. With no government help, these two women faced danger and hardship in an effort to bring education to the Kentucky mountains. Since Mrs. Lloyd's death in 1962, June Buchanan, affectionately called Miss June, has continued to uphold the school's original purpose and philosophy. On the eve of the first four-year graduation, Miss June was honored during a special edition of This Is Your Life with Ralph Edwards. <laughs> Well, it's a pleasure and an honor to be part of the festivities tonight. It's especially good to be back at Alice Lloyd College. It's always a miracle to find Pippa Passes. <laughs> um, I wondered why they call it Pippa Passes. It's to me sort of Pippa Stops. <laughs> You've got to be headed here to get here. That's a, I call this essentially inner rural. Anywhere you go from here is toward town. <laughs> And in my deepest heart, I love it. It's, uh, I think, my fourth visit to the campus. And uh, I'm here tonight with all of you to honor Gene Buchanan and uh, to be a part of the festivities this weekend for honoring the first graduating class from the four-year program at uh, Alice Lloyd College. Uh, probably not any time soon to be Alice Lloyd University, but that was never Alice's dream anyway. So it's good that we're here together tonight to celebrate these good times together. It was 27 years ago, on December 7, what an interesting occasion uh, to honor a woman who in a quiet way had come into the hollows of uh, eastern Kentucky from Boston, riding in a coach of a carriage or a buckboard or whatever to get here, and who suffered a great deal of deprivation, but who essentially experienced an incredible amount of joy. Many of you who sit in this room tonight are products of her concern. And Ralph Edwards on that occasion with This Is Your Life brought Alice Lloyd to Hollywood, California under some false pretense. And she showed up and was surprised, as was everybody else, that this was her life and uh, never sought the limelight. In fact, really loved staying back here in the shadows. And when that was brought to the fore, it struck a chord in the heart of the entire country. Uh, we will hear a bit more about that this evening. But the man who's responsible for that is not only one of the great television personalities in the history of the medium, he is also my very good personal friend. Uh, what you will experience with him tonight is not show business. It's the heart of an individual who authentically cares about good folks, and he is probably more excited about being here tonight than you could ever be about having him here. Would you welcome Ralph Edwards, please? To Kentucky. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could can it and take it home. I'll tell you this. Is well, great. people around here will bottle it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Will you get off while oh, I'm man. ahead? <laughs> well, I'm going to leave it in the good hands of Ralph Edwards. Let's make him feel at home. And uh, <laughs> thank you, Grady. <laughs> I'd like to have about 2% of that future right over there. That is really something. I want to tell you, when I came in here today and saw Ralph Edwards Auditorium, you can't imagine what that did to Barbara and to me. It is uh, it's more than a reward. It is, it is just a life song. And I, I uh, will keep it in my heart and to think that uh, uh, this, uh, this little, this fine, beautiful auditorium is, is named after me is uh, far beyond the, the call. I'm deeply grateful. Uh, to you all. Well now, Grady, thank you very much. Fantastic man and uh, married to a fantastic Eleanor. Our principal subject has not heard the opening of all of this. Hasn't heard the music or anything. But what I say next, she will hear. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we want you to meet one of the truly great pioneers in bringing education to the mountains of Kentucky, Miss June Buchanan. Wasn't it so wonderful of you to come? Oh, thank you. Come on, you look 
Lorraine, you look just like you did on the show when Hollywood. Yes, you do. You do say, dear. There they are. Don't you look fantastic? No different than... When was that? You look the same as you did. <laughs> as long as we come along together. I know there. you on the on Caney Creek anytime. Because oh, we've been always expecting you all these years. Well, we and, and I knew someday it would happen. I knew someday we'd get together. When we have these kind of stories where big things happen, I know it's in good hands and let it go. If they ask me, then I go. They ask and here I am. Are you ready to... Join me in our journey into your past, Miss I think June? so, yes. Okay, dear. Here we go. It's the year 1918. World War I is drawing to a close, and you're doing graduate study at prestigious Wellesley College. Oh, good. <laughs> so I should be doing it. I will check that one off. That was correct. <laughs> Mrs. Lloyd, who had just settled in at Caney Creek, was writing urgent appeals to her friends in the East for help, friends at such schools as Radcliffe and Wellesley, responded by sending clothes, pencils, or money. But one person was so moved that she wanted to volunteer herself, and that someone was you, June Buchanan. One who knew you during those days and has followed you throughout life is here tonight. Now, listen, or see if you can identify this voice. June, I recently visited Ruth Tuttle Green, a Smith College girl, who accompanied you on your first visit to Caney in February 1919. I still have a newspaper article Ruth wrote about that visit. She said, here June and I are in the weirdest spot on earth, 14 miles from a railroad, in a mountain cabin with cracks in the walls, pigs grunting underneath the floor, not a key to the house, and ice on the water in the morning. Oh, I know that man. But we are having the time of our lives. Would. Wouldn't have missed it for anything. Miss June, right can you, you can identify that voice. We have here tonight from Moravia, New York, your longtime banker friend and retired chairman of First National Bank, Mr. Leonard Mott. Oh, yes. We have a... <laughs> Did pigs really squeal underneath the floor? We thought they were murdering people down there. <laughs> you never checked it out, you just went on. Huh? We didn't uh, have a pistol. No, of course not. Oh, you did have, Mr. No. Mott. <laughs> you say uh, you saved an article written by Ruth uh, Tuttle, June's companion? Yes, I did. Tell us what else that article said about times here in 1919. Times were rough. June and Ruth worked long and hard. And the people in this area ba very badly needed Ruth's nursing skills and June's teaching skills. Well, what do you think uh, their parents thought when they read the article? Their parents were terrified. You <laughs> see, I knew both of their parents very well, and they were not very happy to see them come in this general area. So you think their coming down here was a little unusual? Very unusual. Here were two girls who had the best of everything and were coming to a place that their parents thought was another world. Mm -hmm. Now, you followed June's work here closely, haven't you, sir? Yes, I have, and we are very, very proud of June and the fact that she stayed and has made such a tremendous contribution to the people of this area. Thank you, Mr. Mott, for being a part of June's story. Right, gal. <laughs> You're wonderful. <Thank> you. <laughs> nice. you'll, you'll have a lot of time to talk to him after this. Oh, good. <laughs> By 1924, Miss June, you were becoming a part of history. You had taken the lead in helping Mrs. Lloyd establish grade schools and high schools. By this year, the Caney Junior College was in full swing. To gain more support for your schools, groups of students were taken all over America to spread the good news about Caney Creek. You call these crusaders. Now here is the voice of one who went on many crusades and still remembers. I used to call you June Bug. And oh, I went on Dan Martin. A lot of those, <laughs> a lot of those trips with you, June. Speaking before Civic 
professional groups, schools, colleges, and university assemblies, everywhere we could make friends. And uh, we all had to speak in public. Well, you recalled one of the school's first students and one of the earliest leaders you helped produce. From Hindman, Kentucky, a lawyer by profession, but still one of the barefoot boys who came here for an education, is Dan Martin. Bless your heart. It was fun having him on campus. It was such fun there every day. You had a lot of fun with him on campus. A lot of fun. Uh, Dan, I know you've been a successful lawyer, are a successful lawyer, and I know you can speak in public because you spoke on our show for uh, Mrs. Lloyd 27 years ago when Miss June was there. Uh, did you take public uh, speaking here? Yes. At Alice? Yes, uh, Ralph. Uh, uh, Honor June Buchanan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's the greatest teacher that I ever had. Right. Oh, good. <laughs> do you remember any of her advice? Uh, how did it, uh, if you do, how did it help you? Well, we have a small audience, an auditorium here. Mm -hmm. But it means larger places, university uh, assemblies and uh, rotary conventions where we visited and spoke. Uh, we had large audiences. It was 50 yards to the back. Oh. And uh, she wanted to be sure that we were heard. She said, pick them out on the back row and talk to them back there, and then everybody would hear you. Uh, <laughs> so you never forgot that, and it served you well. Yes, it, uh, it you, did. You won a public speaking contest, didn't you, Dan? I don't know. I, I, I can't remember. I was awarded <laughs> one uh, when I granted it. Never got it. Never got it. <laughs> I was awarded an oratorical contest at the college I graduated from, but get you the credit for it, please. Uh, I think <laughs> I'll have to really. round him up, no. wind him up. <laughs> yeah, he needs I, a little of yourself starting in I there, know, but he's, he's been doing fine. Dan, thank you for your recollections of June Buchanan as an excellent teacher. Thank you. Oh, good. Nice of you to say that. know that from the very beginning you joined Mrs. Lloyd in helping educate students even beyond their education here. The idea was that these potential leaders would return to the mountains. Along with Dan Martin, there were many others who kept their promises to return. Now, listen carefully. I was sent to school in Ohio to receive an education and then returned as a teacher. Education was and is desperately needed and we wanted to help our own people. Uh, can you tell us whose voice that is, Monsieur? From the schooling she received here, she went on to graduate from Ohio State University. Here from Cordia, Kentucky, is Alice Sloan. Alice Sloan, yeah. I know her the best of anybody. I know you do. <laughs> It's also good to see you after these many years. As I say, I remember you told us on the 1955 show for Mrs. Lloyd that you were expected to return to the mountains and serve. Have you been here since then? I certainly have at the Lots Creek Community School, and we have tried very hard to follow the example June and Alice Lloyd at Caney Creek. Alice, uh, graduates of this school were schooled in character. Did Miss June help with that? Too? I shall always remember those marvelous uh, lectures you gave on ethics and character development and problems you have wished us to learn to solve. Well, I've forgotten those long since. That's <laughs> <laughs> where you did them beautifully. <laughs> and you'll never forget them. Oh, good. That's good. You'll never forget You haven't forgotten them. You're just writing another book on it. That's all. So you were taught things other than just books, though. We were taught of life's challenges and how to meet those uh, with a socially responsible conscience. Mm -hmm. Consciousness. Sounds oh. grand. Yes, and we were. You presented problems, and uh, we were supposed to solve them in, in a strong, social way, responsible. See service. what a natural teacher you were? You didn't realize how it's much you were. The only thing could... I know, I can I'm a good teacher, but that's you. <laughs> Alice Sloan, thank you for coming tonight and for your years of service to the mountains. Thank you. We'll see you at Hunger.
Well, the year is 1932 now, Mr. June. Our nation is in the midst of the Great Depression. Millions are unemployed. But volunteers still come to teach, do whatever they can. Now, listen to one who came. Uh, dearest June, pity this poor rain-soaked scholar from Pennsylvania. Over 50 years ago, he was baptized in the floodwaters of Caney Creek. One January evening, as he rode a plodding mule from Whalen to Pippa Passes, the next day for his classes, he had saddle sores and had to stand up. <laughs> the mule was flea-bitten, and so his many. feet were frostbitten. <laughs> I don't seem to have all that in my book. <laughs> I don't have it in my memory either. But you don't I, have. But we'll I'm hear just... from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, is the chairman emeritus of your board of trustees, Charles Hubley Houghton. Oh, my oh. goodness. Oh. I'm oh. uh, the president of a college somewhere. I don't think he's oh. the president of a college somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, uh, I think... Uh, you could shake Grady and me up together. We'd come out less than, than you, sir. And uh, now, you, well, all those burns and sores and what riding the mule down Caney Creek. Uh, how did you feel when you reached uh, Pippa Passes? Or dare we, uh, uh, well, I mean, would you go ahead? He wanted to stay forever, I'll answer for him. In retrospect, 50 years ago, June, it's, it's hard to say, but I was convinced that the material difficulties of living in Pippa Passes were nothing at all compared to the pleasures of helping uh, Alice Lloyd and you in the most marvelous program for youth that I have ever known in my life. In spite of the difficulties of living down here, the opportunity of serving was fantastic. And Alice Lloyd said, forget the difficulties of travel and the awful weather. Professor Houghton, your classes begin tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Charles Hudley Hope. Oh, God bless you. It's nice to have you, and I love your presence. Wonderful. Well, the Second World War passes, Miss June, and you are still at Pippa Passes. Katie Junior College, as it was still known, continues turning out graduates capable of going on to the university. You work hard to raise money to improve the campus and give the opportunity of education to more and more mountain students waiting eagerly for the chance. The school attracted the watchful eye of the accrediting agency and a visitor was sent to Pippa Passes to evaluate the school. Miss June, listen carefully to the voice of one who came to see for himself and for the Southern Association. I was sent to Pippa Passes on behalf of the Southern Association by having been president of a neighboring mountain school, I had some idea of what I might see. Your longtime friend, President Emeritus of Cumberland College in Williamsburg, Kentucky, Dr. James M. Boswell. Oh, yes. Here he is. Dr. Boswell, Boswell, you say you had some idea of what was going on here at Pippa Passes? Yes, I, I did. By that time, I had been president of the College for a good number of years. As a member of the commission of the Southern Association, I had information at hand which permitted me to compare what was going on here with what was going on outside these halls. And what did you report about your I uh, commended the school. I commended uh, Miss June. I commended others associated with the school. I noted that the uh, graduates were well prepared. Their records and their achievements substantiated my conclusion. Have you followed the school since then? Oh, indeed I have. I have uh, great admiration and respect for Miss June, particularly because of her devotion to mountain students as individuals. And she will remember that I recommended to her the current president of this institution, Dr. Jerry Davis. Oh. And that was some kind of recommendation. I Thank you, Dr. Have... Boswell, for sharing this with us. Goodbye. We look forward to seeing you a little later at the uh, reception in the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. At the Hunger Den. Miss <laughs> June. 
as uh, Ms. Lloyd was less able to carry on, uh, you, Ms. June, assumed a dominating role in trying to instill proper values in your students. One who still appreciates your influence is here tonight. Now listen to this voice. I conducted chapel over here for 25 years at Mrs. Lloyd's personal request. But it was June Buchanan who played an everyday part in the meeting of the spiritual needs of the students. Can you recall it, boys? Not yet. Here's one of your dear friends and one of the most beloved ministers in the mountains of Kentucky. From Hindman, Kentucky, here is Dr. J.S. Bell. Oh, I know him. Very mm -hmm. What did Miss June do, Dr. Bell, to help with this most important role of the school? She was in charge of Christian Fulham, which was required for every student. Mm -hmm. And in this meeting, they would discuss important values of life. She also wanted her students to study the Bible. And so she would assign them to my class. And when Miss June assigned you, you went. <laughs> <laughs> well, she set a good example for the students, didn't she? She certainly did. I can't remember that she ever missed a chapel exercise. I don't believe I ever did. She was always there, and she led the scene. And about that. Then she, I wasn't very good. I heard it was excellent. She would yeah. even send boys and girls to me for counseling, sometimes a dozen girls at a time. I know it. <laughs> and he, he wanted everybody to give their life to some great cause. And that's probably why I stayed. Ah, oh, beautiful. You couldn't have a better compliment than that, Doctor. Dr. Bell, thank you. December 7, 1955, Miss June, you and the group from Pippa Passes travel to California and take part as the story of Alice Lloyd is beamed to millions. Yes, you were there and a part of This Is Your Life, Alice Lloyd. Well, that was wonderful. We uh, loved and we loved you. I want to tell you, we loved you. Oh, you, you stood out like a shining, shining oh, stone. I, I, think I, I know that you were struggling to carry on and that Mrs. Lloyd was in failing health. On that show, I ask our vast TV audience to put a dollar bill in an envelope and send it to here to Pippa Passage, you know, to ensure that this school, this dream, be kept alive. Now, uh, you came on back, of course, from the show, and uh, what happened? A lot of letters come in and all that. I know they did, but there I were like 16, to hear all about it. There were, there were 16 bags of mail in our, our post office. You're going to say, it's when you and got home. They said, well, the post office sent word up, what do we do with them? And we said, our answer was, let Uncle Sam take care of them so we can take one at a time out, one of those bags of mail. Let's get an expert on it. Miss June, listen carefully to one of Caney's longtime workers who remembers how those money bags rolled in. Oh, good. June, <laughs> I've I always forgotten. regarded you as a good teacher and a good cook. When I saw all those mailbags come in, I knew we could put food on the table. <laughs> all right, this voice, for 40 years, one of your most faithful workers, here all the way from the head of Onion Blade Holler is Cody Jacobs. Tell us now about those uh, mail bags. Uh, were there very many of them? Oh yes, the boys have care of. I just like to hear it, as I say, you know. Yes. All right. Now, uh, was the postal department worried about all that money? Yes, they sent a deputy sheriff along to guard it. At the time, uh, <laughs> I'll bet they did. Uh, uh, did uh, Did you feel the money from the show helped the school? I think it saved the school. Now, had uh, times been hard after you started working here? Yes, I grew up on the creek and uh, began work in the later part of the Depression. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a wonder Hubley didn't run over you with a mule when he came to <laughs> you. Oh, I thought you said in the creek. I'm sorry. <laughs> there, there, yeah. I, I grew up on the creek. On the creek. Uh, how, uh, forgive me for asking this, but it does give us a kind of a relative uh, a view of things. Uh, how much were you paid? Dollar and fifty cents per day when they had it. Sometimes. <laughs> but it always came. Uh, well, yes, yes, we know. <laughs> we don't mean that you didn't come through in the end there. Uh, sometimes you, you didn't get paid. Sometimes we didn't, but we knew we would, even if June had to pay us 
for sale. Right. <laughs> Cody, uh, you told <laughs> you told me earlier about a gift from a boy's piggy bank that uh, showed up in one of the mailbags there. You want to tell us about that? Yes, Mrs. Lloyd showed me a letter where a child had uh, opened his uh, piggy bank and sent that to us. Mm -hmm. Didn't send the pig, just the, the <laughs> Cody, thank you very much for telling us so many interesting things about those mailbags. And thanks for coming. And you know, the government, the government sent in an inspector, and he found all those mailbags. And he went from uh, back to Cincinnati to see how many were back of, of the ones that were there, and all around to all the other post office. And then he hired 14 men that night to guard the post office. They were afraid someone was coming from New York or Chicago. <laughs> I wouldn't think they have to hire anybody. If these guys around here, boy, they'd be right there. Well, I don't know, but he, he got 14 men to come, and they built a big fire down by the creek and stayed there all night and watched that building. And no one ever did come. No? <laughs> Can't say I blame them. Uh, oh, dear. Miss June, of the thousands who responded that night, uh, many have continued to give every year since. You know that. After Mrs. Lloyd's death I in know. 1962, it has been your letters. Uh, many taking the form of poems that have kept the bond strong between this school and those who make it possible with their gifts. Miss June, many of your wonderful friends still remember how they first heard of your work. Listen. My husband and I were watching Ralph Edwards' show, This Is Your Life, on the night of December the 7th, 1955. We were touched by the inspiring story of Alice Lloyd. So when Ralph asked those in the television audience to send a donation, to help keep Mrs. Lloyd's dream alive, we did. My husband was a schoolman and had to struggle for his education. You know, Miss June, you won't know this voice. It's oh. one of scores who saw the show and responded and has remained faithful through the years. Here from Long Beach, California, is Mrs. Dorothy Shaw. Oh. One of our good friends, Mrs. Lloyd's said that uh, you heard my plea and responded to it that night on yes, Alice Lloyd's show. Yes, we did. We heard your plea and we mailed five dollars to Alice Lloyd College. And we answered it, didn't we? <laughs> you have remained interested in this uh, college for these 27 years. Uh, it's uh, marvelous. Have you ever been here at all? I have never been to Pippa Passes. I have never been in Kentucky before until I arrived last Tuesday well, night. It's a wonderful state, and Pippa Passes is the most wonderful part of it. I hope to it. get back again sometime. <laughs> now, what do you think about the school? Oh, I think it is fabulous. The only thing is that the pictures that I receive in the mail just don't do the buildings justice. And that library of ours. That is right. You have to be here to see it to really mm. realize how beautiful it is. The thing that impresses me the most is the love and caring that you people have for each other. It's just unbelievable. Well, we have a marvelous faculty That's and right. gorgeous students. <laughs> and our, our um, uh, trustees are just out of this world. They're so marvelous. <laughs> you want to say friends. a couple of good words about the governor while we're at it? <laughs> well. And I'll tell you who else that you praise, and those are the angels who Really, the donors who send yes. in, like this lovely Dorothy Shaw. Thank you for playing such an important part in our program well, tonight. It's so nice to meet you. It's so grand to meet you. You and uh, Miss June can get better acquainted at the reception at the Hunger Den after the... We hope anybody, everybody comes to that because they can meet you. All of our students thought it was terrible. They couldn't get tickets to see Ralph Edwards. <laughs> <laughs> Heck, I would have come to them, you know. I'm, I'm easy to... We ought to have... Well, that's fine. I know. Uh, well, thank you for the invitation. <laughs> he was the first one in violent. <laughs> Miss June, you've made good friends all over the United States, and uh, I want you to listen carefully to uh, the voice of another special friend. <clears throat> Miss June, 
My sister and I visited you in 1963, shortly after Mrs. Lloyd's death. We stayed in her cottage, but we first heard of your work on Ralph Edwards' show, This Is Your Life, in 1955. Well, you probably won't know this voice either no, because it's been almost 20 years since she was here, Miss June. But here tonight from Chicago, Illinois, is Miss Helen Dargan. Oh, I did know her. Yeah. <laughs> She knew you all the time. And we haven't lost her. She's still our friend. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Dargan, what did you uh, think when you saw my program about Alice Lloyd? Oh, we were so impressed, and we sent a small donation. Mm -hmm. Oh, large. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, uh, collectively it's been. You've supported the school, Miss June, since that time, oh, haven't yes. you? Yes, I have, and I've enjoyed doing it and trying and being a help to the school. Oh, well, we thank you. Help. All Ms. your Dargan. family, your yes. brother and, everybody. and sisters. Oh, everybody did, and your family did so much for us. Well, I'm glad. We can never say enough. Thank you. And she came all the way from I, Chicago just And we love you, we love you, we love well, you. Thank you so much. <laughs> 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 we'll see you later for yourself. <laughs> Got the idea that you're just pumping oil out of her. We love you, we love you, we love you. <laughs> it was just uh, it was just pumping blessings in, uh, into her, not out of her. I know. We couldn't thank her enough for what they did for us. Well, the year now is 1968. Caney Junior College is now Alice Lloyd College. As Mrs. Lloyd has passed away and you are still carrying on, still writing letters to wonderful friends. But it's getting harder for you to travel and meet the college's friends. Here is the voice of a friend who has called on more of your friends than anyone else. I first heard of you at Alice Lloyd College from Dr. Max Forney, who over 12 years ago was superintendent of Huntington Beach, California School District. Dr. Forney and his wife had done volunteer work here in Pippapasas for a summer. He suggested I give two months of volunteer service. So I packed up my car and drove 2,500 miles to volunteer. Do I know him? I, I'm pretty sure you do. Here from Pomona, California, is your good will emissary, J. Onus Leonard. Oh, Oni. he is. Oni. <laughs> Oni. What kind of volunteer work you came to do? I didn't really know. I had no idea what I was going to do. I came with paint brushes and tools uh -huh. in the trunk of my car. But when the college officials found out something about my background and experience in public relations, they invited me to travel all around this great country visiting their friends, Miss June's friends. So you uh, volunteered to do this for two months? Yes, but I'm still doing it. <laughs> When you first went out, what was the uh, climate among the people you talked with? Well, I remember one of my first visits on a helper up in Northern California. And after I talked to him about the college, he gave me a check for $100. But then Miss June wrote to him, and he sent her a check for $18,000. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I still love her. Oh, we love you. Well, so the school's friends relate very closely to Miss June, like the ones we've had here tonight, eh? Indeed they did, all over the country. Very few of them, <laughs> many of them, have not been here to see her, and many of them have not seen Pippa Passes, mm -hmm. but they've come to love her through the mail. Thank you, Mr. Leonard, Oni, for being a volunteer now it. in your 13th year. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody. Up a lot of things to say. They make up a lot of things to say. I don't think they like me that much. Oh, they like you more than that. They, oh, no. They're just bashful, you know. They, they say, Monsieur uh, June, during the recent years, I know you've taken a lot of pride in the college and uh, the leaders produced here. Indeed, you have lived to see what Alice Lloyd said 65 years ago the leaders are here. Let's take a sampling of a few of these leaders and their accomplishments. Listen carefully to a voice you may know. I know June Buchanan well. During my years in the Congress of the United States, I have tried to advance the cause of education, 
something June McCannon and I have in common. Miss June, can you identify the voice? The man behind this voice is one of our country's most powerful congressmen, currently serving as chairman of the House Education Committee here from Washington, D.C. Carl is Perkins. Congressman Carl D. Perkins, right. <laughs> no, he's always been big, Carl. Isn't big, he? Carl. Yeah, <laughs> Congressman Perkins, have you uh, followed the progress of the college since your days here as a student? Yes, I was here in 1928, again in 1930, uh, whole term, and know well about the progress mm -hmm. of the college. And Miss June, along with Miss Lloyd, made the college mm -hmm. and what it is today, and they've kept it in strong. It's survived and prosperous and it's going to continue to be uh, it's prosperous. And what do you remember most about Miss June? Her. Oh, he always said the most marvelous things about him, about me. Don't ask him. <laughs> <laughs> Her leadership and uh, building character. She lectured to us so often and uh, kept us on the right path, gave us good advice. And uh, there was uh, rigid standards here at the school, and she's seen that we lived up to those standards and uh, were good citizens. But we had I some of the leaders, uh, this gorgeous fellow. I think one of the greatest characteristics of Miss June Buchanan is character building. I've always felt that way all of my lifetime. Thank you very much, Congressman oh, Perkins. Come here. <laughs> Coming to uh, honor Miss June. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Medical doctors have long been needed here in the mountains. One of your earliest students who answered this call is here tonight. Listen carefully. When I first walked over Caney Mountain to this school, my ambition was to become a professional baseball player. But Dr. Uh, Barker. I was very soon convinced that. Uh, there is a greater need for a doctor. So that's what I set out to do. Yep, you know the voice. It's the voice of Dr. Denzel Barker from Hindman, Kentucky, one of your early graduates who went all the way through Tulane Medical School and was Kentucky's Rhodes Scholar nominee. Here he is. Dr. Barker, you received help from uh, Caney College after you left here? Yes, not only through the university, but all the way through medical school. Mm -hmm. yes. He was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know you've spent uh, most of your life here in your uh, home uh, county, ministering to the needs of your people. And uh, you, incidentally, brought Mrs. Lloyd out, didn't you, when we uh, did This Is Your Life, Alice Lloyd? She would know otherwise. Otherwise, <laughs> right. Uh, many wonderful stories about, uh, about that, uh, being on the train and then flying home, said, I'll fly home with the gang. Yeah. What uh, would have been your plight in life had it not been for this miracle at Caney Creek? Well, I think I can safely say that uh, this would have all come about. Uh, my family didn't have the money to send me to medical school, but, uh, and I'd never have captured the dream of becoming a medical doctor, or not for Caney Creek, and that was all I'd have. Right. Thank you, Dr. Barker. You certainly have a splendid life. Thank you. See you next Good. Ms. June, among your many prominent graduates are those who have become educators. Working in the mountain school systems, you help start. Graduates of your college have become known for their willingness to work. Now listen. During my student days, I was the work father. My responsibility was to assign work to the boys, carry coal, cleaning, the wherever board. they were needed. Miss June assigned the girls to their jobs. Because of my job, I came to know June quite well. Here from Mini, Kentucky, is Adrian Hall, one who has spent his life as a mountain educator. Oh, yes, Adrian. Did you have a son? No. But 
Adrian. Hello, Adrian. Did you enjoy your vacation back there, whatever that was? Adrian, I understand you're uh, doing admissions work for the college now, after many years of teaching and coaching in Floyd County. Yes, Ralph. Mm -hmm. uh, you must like this kind of work. I enjoy it very much, and I feel it an honor to be back here at the college, trying to help repay what I feel like the college did for me. Well, I'll bet Miss June was glad to get you back on campus. Uh, uh, did she remember you? She certainly did. Oh, good. What? As a matter of fact, <laughs> as we were walking to the cafeteria, she said to me one day uh, when we first came back, said, Adrian, you're not doing your job. <laughs> And I said, uh, why, June? And she says, well, there's a waste can out here. It's running over with paper. <laughs> she hadn't forgotten that you were a work father. And this, uh... She certainly didn't. She has a wonderful memory. Well, Thank you, Adrian yeah. Hall. Hope to see you in Hungered Inn at the reception. We'll check Thank the you. trash can. Oh, it's almost over. Oh, yeah. Why didn't you? <laughs> Thank you. Miss June, your graduates have reached heights of success in all walks of life. Here is the voice of one who directly influences the lives of countless Kentuckians. As Secretary for Human Resources in the Governor's Cabinet, I'm in a unique position to help meet the needs of our people, both in the mountains and the entire state. Now, Miss June, this is the voice of Dr. Grady Stumbo. His dream of opening a clinic resulted in a Rockefeller Award for public service. Here from Frankfort, Kentucky, is Dr. Grady Stumbo. Oh, he's going to be a governor. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he is. Dr. Stumbo, uh, you look like a marvelous boy, you know. I'm sure that uh, Miss June and this college instilled a sense of purpose in you with all you've been able to accomplish. Well, purpose, a great deal was taught to us about purpose, and particularly we were taught to develop our God-given talents and to return home to serve. And Miss June frequently talked about serving others. And we had here what Miss June used to call the purpose rope. Do you remember oh. teaching the purpose road? Oh, yes. yes. They taught it to me. Uh, they were wonderful students. They'd just go ahead. We'd put one uh, signpost on the purpose road and another and another. And uh, there's something about a purpose road. You have to have a goal. Yeah. And when you have world service, even little boys want to do world service, and the big boys more than ever. Mm -hmm. So we had goals, and we reached them. On the purpose road. On the purpose road. Dr. Stumbo, you certainly have a big purpose. Have you kept up with Miss June and the college since you were here? Yes, I have. I've been asked several times to come back to speak, and I'm very proud of the progress this school's making. Good. Thank you, Dr. Grady Stumbo, Good. for sharing this with us. See you at the reception at Hungered Inn. Well, Miss June, your students have excelled in the business world, too. We have brought one of the most successful back tonight. You should know this voice. Listen carefully, Miss June. June, many of your students thought you had eyes in the back of your head. You were everywhere, seemingly all of the time. <laughs> and you caught many of, of us wahooing. <laughs> all right. Uh, caught many of us wahooing. Miss June, you will oh, know yes, that. I know that. You is. will know this voice. <laughs> Is one of your boys who has climbed the ladder in the business world, now an executive of Armco Corporation and currently chairman of the board of your school here from Middletown, Ohio, is Townsel Marshall. Marshall. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to come out here. I've been waiting for you the whole time. Townsel, you said that Miss June caught some of you students Wahooing, what is that? Well, you see, Miss June and Ms. Lloyd didn't really encourage the association of boys and girls on the campus. But they had these large trees that grew up beside the girls' dormitory we call Wahoo trees. Uh -huh. And the boys would climb the trees and talk to the girls through the window. <laughs> well, I, I, I think I see. Uh, are you there? Or whoever. Miss June, do you remember catching the boys doing such a thing? Well, the night watchman caught them. No, oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> you had to look out for him, didn't you? There. Townsville, did you ever get caught? I can still see June walking down the path with a flashlight in her hand. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it was a long one, and they thought I was a night watchman. <laughs> Uh, 
<laughs> oh, Townsville, you've obviously done well in the business world. What else did you learn here that helped you on your way? I mean, besides wahooing. <laughs> well, we received a good education and great leadership training. And we also learned how to work and got all the benefits that learning how to work come, comes from. Yes, what, what kind of work did you do as well, a Well, the first summer I was here, I baked cornbread for two hours did a day. <laughs> <laughs> and then I carried coal uh, for Adrian, and uh, then I worked in the library most mm -hmm. of the rest of the time. I see. I understand, uh, well, you, you, you learned the dignity of work, certainly, yes, didn't you? Yes, certainly did. I understand students are still required to work as a requirement for graduation. Yes, we still believe that that's a very important part of our education and our leadership training, and we're very serious about that. And they had to, had to make their beds before they went to school in the morning. Ah, that's good. <laughs> More of us could have learned that. I think. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Doc, uh, Mr. Townsville Marshall. Look forward to seeing you at the reception, maybe to learn Thank a little you. bit more about Wahooing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. carried the lion's share of the load since Mrs. Lloyd's death almost 20 years ago. And I know you've been concerned about the future and who would see to it that your dream would be kept alive. Well, that uh, someone did come along, and for the past few years, you've taken him under your wing, and Alice Lloyd College has thrived. You two have built buildings, moved ahead, making this a four-year college with the first senior graduating Isn't that tomorrow. I love it. Listen to this voice. Well, 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 Miss Caney Creek, <laughs> t tonight finally came. How grateful I am for I'm the privilege of, of having served alongside of you. Ronald Reagan. You have treated oh, me like a son, <laughs> shared oh, with me so the wonderful. traditions of the He's past. Marvelous. Let me finish. And it's. <laughs> afraid to come out there. What did he say? <laughs> and, inspi let me finish. <laughs> and inspired me to carry your dream into the future. I have many fond titles for you, but none seem to fit you any better than Miss Caney Creek. Well, this voice you, you certainly know. You've already said it's the president. I thought you maybe meant that Ronnie was coming, but of course it's the president. <laughs> it is your Mr. President, the president of Alice Lloyd College, Dr. Jerry C. Davis. Yes. Oh. Oh, Lord. I knew you were going to get me. Well, Dr. Davis, I, I guess more than anyone else knows that you had a great, great deal to do with tonight's show. But uh, where did you get this name for Miss June, Miss Caney Creek? Well, I think Miss June could tell you that. Could you tell him where I got the name Miss Caney oh, Creek? Oh, yes. Well, Alice Lloyd wouldn't go to, to trustees meetings. And, of course, sometimes they were in Louisville and sometimes in Lexington, and that was rather hard. But one at a time, the first time it came here to our old library, and we didn't have the new one then, the trustees meeting was going to be there. And I said, Mrs. Lloyd, this time you're going to a trustees meeting. Walk right down to that library and you're going to, we'll go together. And I'm a trustee too, and I'm going to take you to that meeting. And she said, June, I'm not going. And I said, the trustees want to hear what you want them to do about this college. She said, I'm not going to dictate to those trustees. I'm not going to tell them one thing I want. I want them to do what they want for this college, and they know what I want to. And so we'll do the thing together, but they'll know the grandest things they can do won't be any too good for this college. And so I'm not going, but June, I wish you'd pay attention this time, the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> she, she thought I was going to think about who I was going to dance with that Friday night. <laughs> Or Saturday. Yeah, and I said, Mrs. Light, I'll always pay attention. And I said, well, I'll go alone. And when I come back, I'll come right to your office and tell you all the things they did you want like. <laughs> and I went. I was very mad. But I, but I paid attention. And I came into her office and I said, Miss Lloyd, they did something you wouldn't like. And she said, what could they have done? And I said, they decided sometime to build a building and call it the Alice Lloyd Building. And she said, well, of course I wouldn't have it. I don't want anything named Alice Lloyd of all people. I don't want one thing named Alice Lloyd. I want to have a building named for me. And I said, Mrs. Lloyd, they did something worse than that. June, what could they have done? Now you fight that. What could it have been? I said, they decided when the college was 50 years old, they were going to call it the Alice Lloyd College. 
She said, I'll never have it. I'll get every one of those trustees into my little office and I'll make them promise as Southern gentlemen and scholars that they'll not call this college Dallas Lloyd College. I said, Mrs. Lloyd, did it ever occur to you that in another world your name won't be Alice Lloyd? June Buchanan, what do you mean, another world? And I said, I think they'll call you Caney Creek. <laughs> And she said to me, from now on, I'm going to be Caney Creek. I'm never going to sign my name Alice Lloyd. I'm not going to be Alice Lloyd anymore. I want to be Miss Caney Creek. And when I told the president the story, he called me Miss Caney Creek because he thought I must like the name or I wouldn't throw her in another world. <laughs> <laughs> and so okay, that's why Miss that's Caney beautiful. And I love it. I love to be called Miss Caney. Miss Caney Creek, sure. <laughs> okay. What about this book that you have here now? Well, you have two of them there. Well, what is that? Uh, Ralph, this book represents one of the most enjoyable things I've ever done. For the past uh, three or four years, Miss June and I have had many, many conversations over in the tea room at the Eagle's Nest. And I asked Miss June if I could bring a tape recorder to those sessions, didn't I? And you said that I could, and I told her that if she would let me, that I would one day write a book about her and about her contributions to Caney Creek. <clears throat> so I did, and I've entitled this book Miracle on Caney Creek because I think that best exemplifies the history of our school. Certainly, as you know, the odds were stacked against its survival, but somehow, by God's grace, it made it. So I'd like to present the first copy of that book to Miss Caney Creek. Oh, I think that's really wonderful. Oh, I like the cover. Oh, I like the cover. And look at all this. This is amazing. I should read that to everybody. Oh, and I like this on the back. Here we are, the two of us at our tea room where we had a cup of tea every morning. Yes. And anyway, I hope you'll all come to have a cup of tea with me now. And I can make a present come. every day. I'd like to make a second presentation, Ralph. Almost 27 years ago, as we've heard here tonight, you produced the program, This Is Your Life, Alice Lloyd. <clears throat> I told you in your office several months ago that in my opinion, had you not done this, there would be no Alice Lloyd College today. And that because of what you did that night, when you turned to your television audience and asked those wonderful friends to send in donations, that the school survived. And we've met some of those wonderful friends here tonight. Because of you and countless others, many mountain students are being given and will be given the opportunity of higher education. Many of these students like myself would never have had the chance without a school like this. Amen. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. It's easier to watch back there, Miss June, than to come out here and do it. I have one other presentation, Ralph. Thank you, uh, Jerry. This is wonderful. Dr. Stumbo has given me a certificate from the governor of Kentucky naming you a Kentucky Colonel. Hey! This is something we do for good. Hey! It wouldn't be complete without you telling all of our visitors here tonight, some of whom are coming here for the first time, how Pippa Pass has got its name. Well, there's a poem by Robert Browning, and it's named uh, Pippa Passes. And uh, Pippa was a, a little 10-year-old girl, and she worked in a factory, and she went around that town, Asala, in Italy where she lived, singing beautiful songs. And she decided that she would not pretend, fancy. She was the three happiest people in the town of Asala where she lived. And she'd go by every one of their houses the next day and sing songs. She never met any of the people, but she changed the lives of those four people she fancied she was. And she hoped the mountain boys and girls at Pippa Passes would be like Pippa and unconsciously change the lives of the people for good through the uh, mountain towns as they went home and to and from school and college and so forth. So that's our, one of our aims. And there's a poem about Pippa's song. And the song is, 
The years at the spring, the days at the morn, mornings at seven, the hillsides dew-pearled, the larks on the wing, the snails on the thorn, God's in his heaven, all's right with the world. And so that's our song. We taught that last year to the grade school, and they said it this way. I went down there one day to hear a poem that was giving. I was sitting next to the president, and they said, "Here's at the spring days at the morning, morning at seven, the so hills are so pearl. <laughs> oh, I thought, it was, and I said to the president, "What is that?" <laughs> And he says, that's that song you taught them. <laughs> so it took another year to get them to say it slowly. <laughs> Miss June, I hope that this program tonight has given you some idea of what we think of you. And I hope it inspires us all for the future. And speaking of inspiration, I can't think of a better way to close the program tonight than to have you talk to us about Robert Browning. Would you do that? Oh, I'd love to. Would you tell us about the Browning philosophy first? This most wonderful philosophy, and the grade school know it, and the high school know it, and the college knows it, and they've known it all these years. Robert Browning said, A poor man served by thee shall make thee rich. And that's why we're all rich. A poor man served by thee shall make thee rich. A sick man served by thee shall make thee strong. Thou shalt be served thyself by every sense of service which thou renderest. Isn't that too wonderful? Mm -hmm. I think it's gorgeous. Yeah. Ralph Edwards was recorded on the campus of Alice Lloyd College, Pippa Passes, Kentucky. Material for this program was based on the book Miracle on Caney Creek by Jerry C. Davis. Thanks to a generous grant from the Ralph T. Reeve Foundation, copies of the book are being made available as a public service. For a free copy, write Miracle on Caney Creek, Alice Lloyd College, Pippa Passes, Kentucky, 41844.